first of all, it feels great to be back. Um, and, and this is my fifth Volvo Ocean race, and, and we talk about a, a tough race to do. This has for sure been the toughest for everybody, everybody here on stage, the entire team. But I'm um, really proud that everyone's been able to persevere and get through, get through all the hard times to be back here with a, with a fully functioning boat that now can be competitive in this race and, and then go on and, and, and that hull, that boat will go do the next round the world race. It's, 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 um, I think we've really made the best out of a difficult situation. I think first of all when the incident happened obviously we were not thinking about rejoining the race. Our first priority was get, to get the guys safely back home and then second of all the equal priority I would say would be was to clean up the reef. So to go back and make sure that we left everything in, uh, in good condition. And it wasn't until actually uh, Nico and Coxie went back to the reef to salvage uh, the then wreck off the, off the reef that we actually realized that there was a possibility that we could, uh, we could repair the boat and come back. And as soon as we saw that there was a remote possibility, then we were all in. Uh, there actually didn't take any convincing of the commercial or the sailing team uh, to accept this challenge. They were, they were all in no matter what. And I think that uh, the sailing team has done a great job on the boat, but I have to say my commercial team have done a great job in continuing at all the stopovers, bringing customers, uh, continuing with the great story, and of course, great support from the other teams, allowing us to get spots on their boat and having our customers out on the water and enjoying the Volvo Ocean Race. It was a tough project. I mean, when uh, just after the accident happened, I received a call uh, from, from, from Knut uh, asking if it was possible. And uh, at the beginning, I thought it was unrealistic, but just during overnight, uh, we start working on a production schedule that was maybe a little bit theoretical, including shift, uh, working Saturday, Sunday, Eastern, uh, whatever. And so hiring people, building a new oven, uh, I mean, uh, leveling the mold uh, was kind of uh, a pre-race to prepare the setup. Uh, that uh, and it was nice to have the commitment of all the parties here to do that. And then uh, we found out after Christmas, uh, we were actually ready. And uh, with the schedule that was, again, theoretically, uh, saying it is possible. So then it uh, was, was a big uh, run with a, with a lot of up and down. I remember a few moments where uh, we were really down, but uh, now seeing the boat here in the water is an uh, emotional feeling. Yeah. I think comeback stories uh, also depends on how close you're involved in them. <laughs> uh, I think this one for me, I've been very involved in it um, personally. And I think it uh, I'm 100% sure that I will never forget it in my whole life. And I think, uh, you know, this, this race is so full of memories. I mean, I've been involved in seven races now, either as managing it or racing it. And, and you can't remember, remember everything. You, know, you sometimes have to see pictures to remember it. But I'm 100% sure I will never, ever forget this comeback. When I called Marcelo, I was quite frustrated. And, and um, I called a friend of mine who's an expert boat builder, but he wasn't involved in the boat building of the boats. And he said, absolutely forget it. Don't even try. Uh, and that's kind of the best thing you can tell me, because that's, then I'm damn sure we're going to do it. And I think that's common for everyone who's involved on a sailing level in this race, is that they do it because it is very difficult, and they're attracted by it. And then I called Marcelo, and Marcelo, I said, Marcelo, do you have staff? He said, no. Do you have space? No. Do you have time? No. Do you have a building? No. Can you do it? Yes. <laughs> it was kind of... We almost laughed at each other. I, I hang on, I didn't know if it was a joke, or I should cry, or I should. We, we agreed to speak the next morning. But I must, you didn't tell, but you actually, they didn't have the building, so they had to create a new building because they didn't have any space. If we had known today what we knew about the challenge, this is kind of the things that you probably wouldn't have been able to create the plan in the beginning that you can make it. So, from the race manager's point of view, we had to make sure this boat was 100% identical, not only to the previous boat as it was before, but to every other boat out there. And, and you have to remember that all these other boats have gone through a massive pro process to where they are today. And there's been changes made to the whole fleet, you know, uh, and the accuracy, we're talking about millimeters on these boats, and, and it has to be that way. Uh, and because of that aspect, you would just add time. It will just make things take longer. Because we couldn't just have the boatyard putting things in the boat as they wanted. They have to do the toilet exactly the same place as all the other toilets on the boats. And all the electronics with the exact same cables, with the exact same length, everything has to be exactly the same. 
it's an extraordinary project, uh, and uh, yeah, the stories will live forever, I think, about this comeback. So it, it's probably one of the biggest ones ever in sailing, I think. I think involvement is high because you say as sponsors, yes, we're going to do this and we're going to uh, come back to the race. I think that shows engagement and then you have to follow through as well. So that whole process with ups and downs, I think you have that as a sponsor as well. And you have to stick to it and be determined to, to follow it through. The role, obviously, of Powerhouse is a bit different than Vester's role. as also the, the, the team management and uh, uh, naming sponsor. But then again, also from a powerhouse perspective, it was about uh, no thought of giving up and just following it through and being engaged to the end and uh, making sure this boat is here in the water, uh, well equipped and well prepared. No, I'm not nervous. Uh, I suppose say it's going to be a nice shot to tell that. Um, my favorite place. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, welcome back.